Hey, remember Toriano Pride? Well, he's back in Mizzou Tiger form. And the statistical case for a Missouri victory over Kansas on Saturday in hoops coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. And at the risk of, well, repeating myself over and over and over again, as you all know, I think a giant part of this 2023 Missouri Tiger team and defense was the corners. Missouri was Ennis Rakestraw, Chris Abrams Drain, who Chris Abrams Drain getting plenty of first team All American honors, first team SEC honors rolling in for him. So, in other words, Missouri's going to have some corners to replace next season. Well, fortunately, the transfer portal is wide, wide open at this point. And many of you, if you follow Missouri recruiting closely, probably remember the name Toriano Pride because when he came out, of East St. Louis High School his senior year. He was a very, very highly rated a four-star prospect, a top 100 prospect nationally, in fact, with offers from the likes of Alabama and Georgia. Well, Pride eventually ended up at Clemson, where the first two seasons of his career, he played quite a bit his freshman year, played a, a little bit fewer snaps, his his sophomore season so looking for maybe some bigger opportunities so he was really a, a big time prospect that Missouri wanted badly and Eli Drinkwitz and his staff wanted badly just a couple seasons ago so to get pride back is a really interesting development and again another reminder of why if you're a Missouri fan who likes to well talk to high school recruits online always keep it positive because you never know what could happen in the long term in terms of obviously verbal commitments are non-binding but basically everything is non-binding in the transfer portal era so will be interesting to see what Toriano Pride can do alongside what I would presume is Drayden Norwood next season as your two starting Missouri cornerbacks. And when it comes to other Missouri recruiting news, clearly Missouri wants to walk with Elias. And I mean Elias Williams in this particular case, a four-star defensive end from Hudson, Florida. Well, Tennessee had been really recruiting Williams very hard, but Elias Williams publicly recently in the last week or so reaffirmed his commitment to Missouri. He had visited Tennessee on some officials a couple times, and by the way, the Alabama Crimson Tide were kicking the tires on the young man as well. I got to say the stomping of the Tennessee Volunteers in Columbia had to help reaffirm that young man's commitment, but obviously when you go 10 and 2, that's going to help your recruiting and Elias Williams a very obvious example of that. And speaking of Missouri cornerbacks, well, it looks like Chris Abrams Drain should be good to go for the ball game. No indication that he's going to opt out or really any of Missouri's most prominent non-injury related players seem like they're going to opt out of this football game. So that's a big, big time variable that is favorable for Missouri against the Ohio State Buckeyes. 
in the Cotton Bowl and the line over at FanDuel Sportsbook, well, it's definitely reflected this reality. As we've now had officially a nine-point movement from the opening of this line. The earliest line I officially saw, six and a half points. I saw some people really got that number over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Well, that six and a half, obviously that was Ohio State as the favorite. Well, Missouri now all the way as a two and a half point favorite as we record here on just a little past five o'clock here central time on Thursday evening. So a really interesting line movement. One I frankly pr predicted here on Monday, though, honestly, I wasn't sure it would move this quickly, though the news with all the Ohio State opt outs has come rather quickly. So I think the line movement is absolutely warranted. Now, while obviously bowl games may not have the cachet outside of the college football playoff that they once did, still, for Missouri to potentially go 11-2 this season, that's a truly historic season, regardless really of a win or loss. But obviously just everything for Missouri to play for this season. But really, speaking of 10 wins, potentially 11 wins, maybe the biggest win of all for the Missouri Tigers was getting off of the new coach hiring train. Because as we all know, if this season, hypothetically, if this season would have gone badly for Missouri, let's say Missouri was a sub 500 club this season. I know that's, that's tough to imagine right now that Missouri just went 10 and two, but if you put yourself back at the beginning of September or August or at any time in this off season, certainly there were doubts about Eli Drinkwitz in this program. Sure, there's a lot of positive signs in recruiting, and yes, in the 2022 season, some positive signs, a lot of them statistically, though, and not necessarily in terms of results. Well, this season has given you all the results you needed to put your faith in Eli Drinkwitz for the future, and honestly, just to get off of the idea of my goodness, if Missouri was having to get on yet another new coach at this point, that would have honestly been a nightmare. Compare it to what Texas A&M's situation is. For example, the Texas A&M Aggies reportedly just tried to hire Mark Stoops, except for, well, they had a massive social media revolt by their own fan base that caused their administration to go, whoops, my bad. Sort of like when Missouri did it with Blake Anderson, right? Before Missouri hired Eli Drinkwitz, of course, there was Blake Anderson. And Missouri was saying, hey, we're going to hire this guy. That's who Jim Sterk took to the board of curators before they said, eh, eh, give us somebody else and ultimately approved Eli Drinkwitz. Well, Mike Elko ultimately ends up being the guy at Texas A&M. From what I've heard, hey, a lot of great stuff to be said about Mike Elko. Whether that works out or not, I don't know. I'll be honest, I thought Mark Stoops, while he's done a great job at Kentucky, felt like a bit of an odd fit in College Station. So we'll see what happens. But here's the thing. Here's what I've learned in the last few years, and if not the last few decades of following college football. Of course, the head coach is an incredibly important element of any football program, if not the most important element. It probably is the most important element, right? But at the same time, if you don't have a really good athletic department and in, in specifically an athletic director to be the steer of the ship of your entire program, well, you're, you're just going to kind of be rudderless for the most part, as Texas A&M has been now for decades. Despite having all of the resources in the world, Texas A&M once again finds itself on this train of, hey, let's buy out another coach and spend a bajillion dollars, and hopefully it works out again. And by the way, Mike Elko, if in year two he starts off two and three, we're probably going to be looking to buy out him. So again, this endless cycle, let's just all be really thankful that Missouri isn't on it. And by the way, what Missouri really needed to do, the sign there was that, oh, 
we need to get rid of this athletic director, to be honest. And putting aside all of the weird ramifications of the board of curators at Missouri, hey, you need to get your right athletic director. And honestly, it sounds like Texas A&M needs a new athletic director as much as it needs a coach to me. And coming up, let's look at the stats and talk about how Missouri and Kansas matches up this coming Saturday in the border war in Lawrence. But you know what? First, I want to tell you about a fan duel sports book because this time of year, it's time to get a little bit cold, but also the NFL offers stay hot over at FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is incredibly easy to use with a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over under totals and more just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and kick off the rest of the nfl season fanduel official partner of the nfl thanks for making locked on mizzou your first listen every day and by the way on Saturday, for another listen, check out, of course, Missouri and Kansas. Of course, most of you are going to be watching it on television, but if you're out and about, check it out on the SiriusXM app or on your radio dial, Mike Kelly and Chris Gervino, channel 190 for your Missouri home feed. Nobody wants the Kansas feed, no question about that. So by all means, go to channel 190 for that. But I will say... Kansas on paper, not a team that is likely to kill Missouri on the boards. Of course, that was more of a concern last season when Missouri was had, had was more size challenged, let's put it that way. Also, Kansas, not a team that turns you over a ton defensively, which I like for Missouri's offense, of course. But having said all of that, make no mistake, this is a highly effective offense offensive team in the Kansas Jayhawks. In fact, they're first in the entire country in terms of assists per field goal made. That's a that's probably a lot of credit to Dewan Harris and their ball movement in general. And frankly, the Jayhawks, as good as they are offensively, are even better defensively. I mean, let's face it, folks. Bill Self, kind of a scumbag, but at the same time, the guy knows basketball. What can I tell you? I wish it weren't true, but it is. And also there, to be honest, if I'm going to give Missouri some statistical advantages here, Kansas's three point defense, also a little bit middling in terms of national rankings, but overall giving up 31% downtown from downtown, I should say, not exactly setting off a ton of alarm ball alarm bells, excuse me. And Kansas also not a great free throw shooting team either. So the Tigers, a team that tend to foul a lot, maybe they'll get away with it a little bit against the Jayhawks, but well, considering Kansas tends to get the, the calls at home, I wouldn't expect a lot from the referees. And speaking of my friends over at FanDuel Sportsbook, well, the Tiger basketball team currently 40 to 1 to win the SEC. And I have to say, compared in terms of value, I, I don't hate those odds whatsoever. Now, don't get me wrong, I, I don't, I'm not predicting the Tigers to win the SEC. And I'm not even telling you that you need to go out and jump on that futures bet. But what I am saying is is that I think the Tigers have a chance to climb up the rankings here. Basically, the Tigers are in the bottom half of the SEC. If you look at the current projections based on the odds over at FanDuel Sportsbook, I honestly just think they can be better than that. I, I think that there's an interesting mix here. And, and regardless, again, I, I, while I think this team can still make the NCAA tournament, I just don't think they have enough high-level talent necessarily to be as good as they're going to be in the future. I think you look at the recruiting that Dennis Gates is doing 
right now for the class of 2024 in particular. By the way, 2025, a lot of indications that Aaron Rowe, who is currently at Tolton High School here in Columbia, a really high-level player, is going to be a Tiger eventually. We'll see maybe an official announcement here in the near future. But regardless, I think if you're looking at Missouri basketball for this season, who is their best player? Who are the Tigers counting on when the shot clock runs down, when it when the game slows down, to make a shot in the half-court offense in particular? I know that sounds maybe a little reductive, but at times, as we've seen, that is what some close games come down to. Quite simply in basketball, who is the best player on the court? And right now, for Missouri, it's probably Sean East, a guy who's incredibly quick off the dribble, a guy who has a good in-between game, and a guy who suddenly is an elite three-point shooter on a relatively, not a, not a ton of attempts, but not, not a small amount either. I would just say, you know, not as many as Nick Honor either. Let's put it that way. He's certainly not Demoy Hodge last season in terms of volume. But off the dribble, man, in particular, Sean East has been really impressive so far. You just wonder if a guy at his size can truly be your go-to guy one-on-one. -on -one. Although I will say the way the NCAA basketball is officiated this season, to me, if you're Sean East and you need a bucket, things are dwindling down with seven seconds left on the shot clock, there's a lot worse options than simply driving into the defender's chest and putting the onus on the official because right now charges are few and far between and coming up now that we're into the football off season and there's only well no midweek missouri basketball games you know what you know what that means it's time to get weird so what's the question in our weird segment this week what makes a ball Huh? What what am I asking here? No, seriously. What makes a ball a ball? I'm going to explain what exactly I'm asking coming right up. But first, let's talk about prize picks, where it's the easiest place to play daily fantasy sports in North America, quite honestly. And with basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the Specials League, a league created specifically for combo projections that include two or more players from different sports or leagues. For instance, LeBron James plus Travis Kelsey at a 10.5 combo of three-pointers made plus receptions. Well, that sounds like a more than to me. I don't know about all you, but you know what? Prize picks even offers a re reboot policy so that your entries can stay in play even if one of your players get injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, well, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So, Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. It's prize picks daily fantasy sports made easy. So as the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball, as you might imagine, I love the ball sports. Not just football and basketball, but I'm a big-time baseball guy as well. In fact, I was one of the great fantasy baseball players of all time for a couple decades or so. Haven't played for a few years, but damn it, I know and love my baseball without a doubt. And also, I've gotten really into golf lately. I l absolutely love playing the game of golf. But you know what? The other day, for some reason, I don't know, maybe I was just staring off into the great void or something, but my mind started to wonder, wander, excuse me, and I thought, what actually makes a ball a ball? Because if you think about it, well, it's not that there's air in the ball, for instance, because, well, yes, in football and basketball, there's air 
in a ball. Well, in golf, there's no air in a basketball. There's no air in a baseball either. It's sort of wound tightly with some type of, of rubber and, you know, twine, whatever the heck is inside of a golf ball and a baseball. But there certainly isn't, it isn't aired up. It's not something you can put a, a bicycle tire pump to and expect anything magical to happen. But those, th- those things I've just described, well, they also aren't spherical necessarily either. You take a, a football, well, it's oblong. It's not a sphere. So, yeah, it's not really a ball. It's a ball, but it's not. What, what, is, what is the one thing that gives all of these things something in common? You think about the sport of hockey. Well, a hockey puck is essentially a ball, but nobody calls it a ball. It's a thing that we all chase around and try to knock into the goal like we do a soccer ball, for instance. But for some reason, a puck is not a ball. Why is a puck not a ball? I I have no idea. Somebody answer me this simple question about what makes a ball a ball. And for instance, have you ever played the game cornhole at, at a tailgate? at at Faroe Field or something like that. Well, that's essentially the same game as bocce ball for all intents and purposes, but it's not a ball because it's a sack. So a sack, if it's not solid, I guess that doesn't make it a ball. Anyway, I was promising you to get weird here. As you can tell, it gets a little weird here as we get into cocktail hour here on Locked on Mizzou. But thanks for all. Thanks as always for joining me on this podcast. And I promise Next time, even more in-depth thoughts about Missouri and Kansas, the basketball game. I'll see you all Friday right here on Locked on Mizzou.